That being said, Mark chapter number 6, we're going to start reading down in verse number 45. I do want to thank Pastor. Um, I texted him today, thanking him for the opportunity. Um, I know he knows a lot of preachers that he could always call and ask to fill in when he's gone. And um, I count it an honor and a blessing and humbled that uh, he trusts us to be able to fill his pulpit while he's away. And so Mark chapter number 6, verses 45 and we'll start reading the word of God. And straightway he constrained his disciples to go into the ship and go in, and go to the other side before, un, before unto Bethsaida while he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed unto the mountain to pray. And when he even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And, after, and he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed them by. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled. Immediately he talked with them, and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them, went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure, and wondered. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, we do thank you again for this opportunity and blessing we have to come into your house tonight, Lord. Lord, we do ask you to be with each and every one of these prayer requests that were mentioned, Lord, those that are facing surgery. Uh, we thank you for those that have come through surgery, Lord. We do thank you for that and those answered prayers. Lord, we ask you to be with those that are traveling, those that are going through things, those special unspoken requests. And Lord, we just uh, ask you just be with each and every one. Ask you just help us now. Be with what you've laid upon my heart, Lord. Just help bring it to remembrance, Lord, for me to give it to your people the way you gave it to me. Lord, that it can be a help and encouragement to each and every one of us here tonight. Lord, we ask you to pray for our pastor. Lord, those services that he might be in, Lord, that uh, he doesn't preach. Lord, you just helping him and strengthening him. Lord, knows that he gets the, that you, know, you uh, desire to, for him to preach. Lord, that you just help him be a help to the, your people. Lord, and to help to strengthen and lift them up. Lord, I ask you to just be with him as he travels from place to place and watch over him and bring him back home safely. Lord, we thank you again for everything you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first thing I'm going to look at is we see in verse number 45 is we just simply see uh, the directive. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and go to the other side before into Bethsaida while he sent away the people. We know if we go back and we read what had just happened, um, it even talked about it down there in verse number 52, they considered not uh, the fishes and considered not the loaves and everything that had just happened, there were 5,000 that he fed. And now he's put them in a ship and he's told them to go to the other side. They were given a specific directive, which we'll get into a little bit later while that's important. We see his directive. How often are we given directives by God that we tend not to pay attention to? And it don't have to necessarily be what the will of God is for our life. It's simple things out of the Word of God, like coming to church, like studying our Bible, like being a witness for Him. Simple directives that God gives that we too many times cannot follow uh, for whatever reason that we want to come up with or whatever excuse we want to give, uh, but simple directives that we're given that we tend to not follow as well. We see in verse number 46, though, we see how he departed. And he sent them away, and he departed unto a mountain to pray. I don't know what he prayed for, uh, uh, but it, it is comforting to know that more often than not how he prays for us. We know the Bible tells that he prayed uh, for us and he'll pray for us and he could have been praying for them uh, for what they were fixing to face. Um, but we see the direction that was going on here in verse number 48. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto, the, cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed them by. We see the direction they were headed. We know they were headed to the other side, but now all of a sudden the wind was contrary to them. They was doing what God had told them to do, what Jesus had told them to do right here. They were headed to the other side, and all of a sudden the wind started blowing against them. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, because um, Sammy, what's my favorite sport? Golf. I taught their Sunday school class, and it's funny, I talk about it so much. There was three of them in there, and two of the three knew what it was on Sunday. But this golf tournament, there's a golf tournament that starts tomorrow. 
It's one of my favorite tournaments of the year because it's something completely different, the Open Championship. It's being played this year over Royal St. George in Scotland or wherever that's at, England. I think it's just outside of London. But I say that to say this. This golf course that they are playing is one they say a lot of the players don't like because they can't see everything that's in front of them. They have a lot of blind shots and a lot of things that they can hit their ball and seem like everything is perfect, only to get up and found that it's taken a mound or it's taken a hill somewhere and end up in a great big deep pot bunker. That's how our life is sometimes. We can be do everything right just as disciples are. They're headed to the other side as Jesus sent them, but now the wind is contrary to them. How do we handle that wind? That's the thing. That's the talk all this week about who's going to win. What's going to be who can handle those unlucky breaks? Who can handle those times when they get up and they think they've hit the perfect shot and find themselves in a bunker? How do we handle that when that wind has come contrary to us? Well, we see the disciples here didn't really go very well for them because it talks about how they were toiling and they were rowing and when they seen Jesus in verse number 50 and they were all troubled not knowing what was going on and we see his decision we see the decision that they had made here in verse number 52 for they considered not the miracle of the loaves for their heart was hardened somewhere in these eight verses here nine verses whatever it is they made the decision amongst themselves that they had completely forgot everything that they had just seen Jesus done that we could go back and read in verses 32 through 44. They completely lost track of everything he's done. And I'll be honest, God laid this on my heart a couple weeks ago, and I, I had been looking at things and studying, and then his brother Doug uh, ended his message last Wednesday night, and I was like, well, I can't, that, that's almost the same thing I'm going to preach next week. I can't do that, especially not to the Wednesday night crowd. So I've looked at other things, and I, I've, I've tried my best to get away from it, but this is what God wants me to preach tonight, with his help, after all God has done. After all God has done, you look back and you think of even the Israelites in the wilderness and think of the disciples, how many times they had seen Jesus work miracle after miracle after miracle, yet they find themselves continually in, in predicament after predicament where they're not fully trusting God. After everything that we had seen God done, I have no idea when Brother Doug uh, texted me today and he talked about the church and hazard being way down, I have no idea, Brother Phil, uh, the situation down there. But I know in some of the preaching that I listen to uh, uh, from people who post their services online and, and post their preaching online, there are multiple churches all throughout our country, even several probably in our state, that are down because people just have not come back because of COVID. Just have not come back because it's just easy. We talked about it last week in Sunday school, didn't we, Miss Sammy? It'd be much easier, Brother Phil, just to sit at home if you wanted to, leave her pajamas on and get up at 9.58 and flip over on the live stream and just kick back and watch TV. And too many people, that's exactly what they've done. Right. Yet after all God has done, after all God did through here last summer, after all God has done even through then, our pastor talked about last week that sometimes a, a camp meeting can just be the shot in the arm that we need. Why do we need that shot in the arm? After everything God has done around here, why do we find ourselves needing that shot in the arm, so to speak? You know, I, I hear I, you can read about revivals and you can read about great awakenings and read about all these things that happened hundreds of years ago. I don't read many of them that went on for a weekend. They would go on for years. They would go on for months, up to years. How come we don't find ourselves in that situation? After all God has done, the first thing is too many times we, send, we tend to lose direction. Psalms chapter 119 and verse 105, a verse that I'm sure all the, the kids know and all of us have learned at some point in our life, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Do we practice that? Do we put that in practice that we allow God's word to light our path and, and to lead our path wherever he wants us to go? Because too many times we, we're headed down that path, we can have a, a great revival, we can have a great camp meeting, or even a great Sunday morning or Sunday evening or Wednesday evening service, and we make a decision, this is what I'm going to do, this is what God wants me to do with my life, and only to find three weeks later, we've completely lost what that direction is. I mean, how many people, like I have even seen just come through here, through our church, uh, men who said they were going to preach and they, they know this is what God wants me to do and said they're not even preaching now. They're not even in church now. Pastors and preachers that have come through here that aren't even in the same place because somewhere along the way, they've lost their direction. In 3 John chapter 1, verse number 11, it says, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. 
He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. Too many times we get to where we're following that as evil. And we think a lot of times we automatically believe that if it's evil, well, it's just got to be the devil and it's got to be wicked stuff. No, something we talked about in, in, in the teen class last week in Sunday school and teaching other kids this past week is that, that sin that doth easily beset us. It's so easy sometimes to fall into sin. It's so easy sometimes to get away from what God has us to do and to lose direction. It doesn't have to be something super wicked, but if it gets us away from the things of God, it's something we don't need to have in our lives. The second thing, see, it's a good thing. I'm going to share this real quick. It's a good thing Tina's hours changed to work. So she works till 8 tonight, so she's not watching the live stream on the way home. Because she told me the last, the, when we did the uh, uh, tag team, she goes, you did much better tonight. She goes, you didn't have that water there as a nervous habit to pick up and take a drink of water. I got the water tonight. It's not a nervous habit. You get so nervous, Brother Phil, you just get dry mouth up here, don't you? Maybe Brother Jordan's probably better than us. He probably don't have that problem. Because he'll teach Sunday school and leave that cup there and not drink it till afterwards. I would die if I didn't take a drink of that uh, before then. The second thing, first, not only do we lose direction, too many times we leave doubting. Who do we call him in the Bible? Doubting Thomas. Boy, we'll throw off on Thomas all the time, won't we? And yet the first sense of trouble, we doubt what God can do. We might not say, we're obviously not going to say that out loud but we live our life that way. How many times when something happens in our life, the first thing that we want to do is we want to look for the world to solve our problem. We want to look at the world's avenues to solve our problem instead of immediately going to God. We see the disciples here. They had seen everything that Jesus had just done, yet they're doubting that they're going to make it to the other side. We see them, it tells us in verse 52, for they considered not the miracle of lows, for their heart was hardened. They were amazed at what Jesus had done in verse 51. That what it said? And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure. Why were they amazed? Why are we amazed sometimes when God answers prayer? Do we doubt that he's going to do it? Does the Bible not tell us whatsoever ye shall ask? Believing. Because too many times we don't believe. It's easy just to say, God, I need you to meet this prayer request. How often do we truly believe he's going to do that? How often do we walk in here on a Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night or whatever it may be, believing God's going to save somebody? How often do we walk in believing, say, tonight's the night God's going to save somebody. God's going to send somebody in here lost, and I just know that somebody's going to get saved tonight. How often do we know, do we believe, even going out on visitation on Monday nights, that we walk out with the belief, somebody's going to get this tonight, and they're going to be at church this upcoming Sunday? How often do we believe those things? We throw off on Thomas all the time about doubting Thomas and how much he doubts, but yet too many times we do the same thing. Not only do we leave doubting, but too many times we listen to the devil. We too often look at this, as I said earlier, about just the fact of pure evil. We think the devil is just going to tell us to do something wicked, to go do drugs or go do this or go do that. How many times have you ever sat in a service and, and you just feel just in your heart that you need to stand up and sing. And the devil would say, don't nobody want to hear you sing, Brother Donald? They don't want to hear you sing, bud. You, you stay right there. And what do we do? We just stay right there and sit on our hands. How many times do we just have that feeling, hey, you just need to go talk to, to that person or, or whatever it may be, and the devil get in your head and say, they don't want to talk to you. They're not inter interested in the gospel. I have that situation at my work. I never dreamt some of the people that I've talked to that you find out they go to church and they read their Bible and they have the same beliefs that you do and all those kind of things. Sometimes so you just talk to them. Now, there's some out there, Brother Brian, that are. They're just far out there as what you think they'd be, but not all of them necessarily. Too many times we give thought to the devil. We allow him to put those things in our mind that we can't be used or we're not good enough or that, that God nobody wants to hear us, and we give him that, that voice in our head and it keeps us from doing so much for God. It keeps us from doing so much on what God wants us to do. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't mean to, I'm not trying to embarrass him or anything, but it, it does me good just to come in sometimes and listen to Brother John talk about sharing the, the gospel with certain people just walking up to anybody on their honeymoon and all these people you talk to. Because it shows, I'm guessing Brother John would tell you, he's no different than any of us. We could see the same thing. Why don't we? We listen to the devil too much. You don't need to do that. You don't need to give them that track. You don't need to talk to them. They're not interested. We went to uh, we went down to uh, um, Skyline 
uh, when Brother Mike Goodson was here. And uh, Brother Mike and Sister Lisa was going out with Brother Mike and Sister Kay, and we kind of um, invited ourselves and tagged along and went down there as well and run into a waitress. Now, I don't remember what all got said at the beginning of it, Brother Phil, and I missed what everything was said, but and then we get done, and Sister Lisa has left a, a track there on the table, and she comes out and talking about her dad was a pastor somewhere, and she was going, and, and you know, just you never know how you can strike up the conversation if we would just listen to God a whole lot more than we would listen to the devil. The fourth thing, see if I just get a drink at each point, you know, maybe it'd be all right. <clears throat> After all God has done, too many times we lose direction, we leave doubting, we listen to the devil. We lack drive. We just like to get up and go sometimes. Why? I don't know why. Look, I, I understand Brother Doug talks about, and he has talked about this at many different churches and pastors that he knows, that it is literally 10 of the people do 90% of the work. And it's not that way around here. I, it, it, was, it, it was amazing. I don't know how many people we had that showed up last Saturday and all the stuff. I don't know how big their list was. I was just mowing, but I know uh, Sister Annette was talking about all the stuff they got done in that couple hours, and you can just look and see all the stuff they got done in that couple hours. There's so many people that showed up. But too many times we just lack drive on just basic things. Just basic things of getting done. When, how often, how much time and effort do we put into service? How much time and effort do we put into praying for our pastor each and every week? Even if he's not here, how much time do we put into praying just for his discernment on who needs to preach, who he needs to have come in? Who he, uh, I, I, I think we need to make sure we're taken seriously that camp meeting that God show him exactly who needs to preach each and every service and when and who needs to sing. There's going to be a lot of preachers in this building. That's a big decision. How serious do we take those things? Too many times we just lack the drive. We just that Somebody else take care of it. Somebody else will do it. We just, we just get tired and weary of coming in, I'm afraid, sometimes service after service after service, and we just don't put that time and effort into those things that we should. And because we lack drive... Not last thing done, but the last thing for this. Too many times we just lay down and quit. After God had moved greatly, God had breathed down fire, what did Elijah do? Went and sat under the juniper tree and asked God to take his life. I'm no better than my father's God. I'm just, just give up. Too many times we get to that point where we just want to give up. We see God do something great. We see God move through and he might save, you know, a, a, a dozen young people last summer or however many it may be, however many people it was, and we just see God show up and just do something miraculous and wonderful and great and then to have a couple little things go wrong, we're just like, hey, what's the point? What's the point? I just give up because we just feel like we're not getting anywhere. Look at this world and understand that we've got to make sure that we don't just give up that we've got to make sure we put our best foot forward because of what's going on. You don't think, you know, I, I've often said this, we never dreamt we would have a day like we did last summer that we wouldn't be able to have services. They are now burning churches in Canada. I, I don't know the whole story behind all that completely, but all I know is they're burning churches. Enough be said. Who knows what's going to happen here in the next who knows how long. Who knows how long it take before that kind of stuff get me here? You know, we, we see, uh, I seen something today, and, and, and I'm just as tired of it as you are, but I seen something today uh, that now Ohio, even all, you know, I thought it was all the way out in California. Now Ohio's biggest thing of COVID is this Delta variant. I seen something else. They said the, the, the Delta variant is actually code for you're not scared enough still. So that, that sounded to me, Brother Tommy, like that pretty much summed it up. People trying to get back to normal, so now all of a sudden this new variant's coming up, or this variant's been around, and all this stuff. Just putting fear in people. Why? Because too many times we're willing to just lay down and quit. Too many times we have something that comes up, and we're just ready to roll over and say, it's not worth it anymore. I give up. No, there's a whole lot that's still worth it. We don't have any idea how much longer we have. We have no idea how many more generations may set through this church. Will it still be here? Or will we be the ones that Emmanuel Baptist Church dies off for? Why? Why, after all that God has done, why do too many times do these things happen? I believe there's two things that God laid on my heart of what gets us in trouble. The first is our eyes. Where are we looking? Where do we look? 
It is easy to walk out in this world and look around and get discouraged. It is easy to walk into church sometimes and get discouraged. You might have that neighbor, you might have that friend, you might have that uh, family member, that co-worker that you have invited to church time after time after time after time, and you walk in on Sunday morning expecting them to be here and they're not there. You, you might have expected them to come last Sunday and they wasn't here. It's easy to look and get discouraged. Look to Jesus instead of looking to that. Not only where we look, but also who we look to. Who are we looking to for our help? It shouldn't be, uh, you know, it's easy to throw off. It shouldn't be Dr. Fauci. It shouldn't be Joe Biden. I, I believe if our pastor is here, he would even tell you it's not to him. Look into Jesus. Look unto Jesus on what He can do in our life and what He can do for us that keeps us from being in this situation too many times where we fail to realize what God has done. The last thing I believe that leads us down this path too often is it's in our feelings. We get way too caught up in our feelings. Way too caught up too many times in our feelings. If it feels good, you know, as our pastor talked about, feels good, do it. If it feels bad or something like that, we don't want to do it because it might make us do this or do that. If nothing happens between now and then, here in about, what would you say, Caitlin, three weeks till your thing? So it's here in about four weeks, we will have been married 25 years. Now, to some of you, I know it's amazing because I don't look like I'm over 35. We had that conversation the other day. Don't laugh at me. I have teen even said that the other day. Thank you very much. We have been married 25 years in August. I used to think that was a whole lot until here it was, what, about a month or so ago? Brother Bob and Miss Sunny was 49 years, is that correct? 49 years. They wouldn't have made it this long if every time they got up and was going to have a bad day, Brother Bob wakes up and he had a bad day, so he just tells Miss Sunny he's done. Why do we do the same thing with God? I don't get to walk in tomorrow and, and wake up in the morning. So here's, okay, here's, I'll just use myself as an example. We had this bright idea, Brother Donald, that we was going to paint our fence. We was going to repaint our fence. That fence has been back there. It's had redwood stain on it uh, forever and a day. And we was going to repaint it. So that repainting, Brother Clint, turned into replacing a board. A board. I went to Menards a little over a week ago and bought one 16-foot board, Brother Phil, and came back and replaced it. That was it. That one board turned into three more boards. In replacing those other three boards, Brother Bob, we're standing outside, and the neighbor comes out, and he goes, boy, this is going to look good when you all get done. You're going to replace that. You might as well just replace the whole thing. Oh, no. That put it into Miss Tina's head. So we replaced one whole side, and most of the, we replaced about 75% or so of this fence so far. And we're almost done. We Hopefully we'll get all of it done um, tomorrow night. I'm tired. I, I'm not built for that. I, I don't work this hard anymore. You know, growing up 30 years ago, it was okay, Brother Bob. Yeah, I grew up cutting tobacco, working in hayfield, all that. Not now. Not now. I don't get to go in tomorrow, Brother Charlie, because I'm tired and had a bad day and tell my job, I ain't working today. Why do we do it at God? Why do we get tired? Why have we had a bad day and we just come in and we just pop down and at, look at our pastor and say, give me something because I'm just wore out today? Why would we do that? Why too many times we do that? Because we get too caught up in our feelings. We get too caught up in how we feel. If we feel down, we feel depressed, we feel like we've had a bad day, we feel like we just can't go on, and we allow that to play into our mind and not be where God wants us to be. These disciples had just seen Jesus feed over 5,000. Had feed over 5,000. Not only after that, what's it talk about? You look back up in verse number 43, and they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and other fishes. So they ate all that food and took up more than what they even started with, Brother Phil. That's what the Bible says. And yet here they are, 10 verses later, amazed that he would come get on the ship and the wind would cease. Amazed. After all that he'd done, they still stand amazed. After all God has done, after all God swept through here and did last year, why do we still continually to go back in the same position that we are time after time, 
where it almost just seems and just feels like just apathy just kind of sets in, that we just come and go through the motion, service after service after service after service. Why is it that if our pastor asks, who's got a song? And look, don't stand up and sing if God hasn't laid anything in your heart. Don't stand up and testify if God hasn't laid something on your heart. But I think enough of us will be honest with ourselves. God has done enough in our each and every one of our lives that we should come in rejoicing each and every time we come in here. We should come in here with smiles on our face, looking forward to get the opportunity to worship. Because we never know when it might be our last opportunity. We don't know, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, uh, the, the church is going to be shut down. I'm not saying that COVID's going to break out and close us down, but we never know when it's going to be our last chance. We never know when it might be our last chance just come and say, God, I just love you. I just want to thank you for everything you've done for me. I just want to thank you for everything you've done for us as a church. And just, Lord, just want to thank you. How exciting is it? This just just me. How exciting it is to be part of a church that when we came, and it's been right at 20 years, somewhere right around this time, 20 years ago, to be in that building over there, to be sitting here now looking at building what is back there in that hallway. That is awesome. In 20, to me, that's just awesome. We should come in just being thanking God how exciting that is and how awesome that is when you see our pastor go out, when you hear other people go out and other missionaries come in or evangelists come in to tell us you don't see this everywhere. And the churches that they're going in, that they're just seeing them way down since last year, and yet we're going into a building program, Brother Donald. How awesome is that? How excited are we about that? How often do we tell him we're excited about it? How often do we walk in acting like we're excited about that? After all God's done, where are you at? Where are you at in your relationship to Him? After everything He's done in our lives, not only around here, but each and every one of us personally, where are we at in our relationship with Him? I've said last year, there, there's a, a preacher, that, uh, preacher that I listen to and listening to their uh, um, uh, preaching their sermons and stuff each week, and he talks about how COVID was one of the best things that ever happened to him because of how much closer he got with God, because how much time he spent in prayer. Can any of us say the same thing? Are any of us closer now than what we was last year? After all God's done in our lives, we should be. But are we? We should be, but are we? After all God's done, how much time are we putting into prayer to see this camp meeting might be the one we just completely blow it out, and who knows how long it goes on? That we do truly turn starting with this county, with this church, with this county, with this state, going all across this country and turning this world upside down for the Lord. Our pastor said it, and I would love to see it. Yet to see one church completely sold out. Why can't it be us? After all he's done for us, we should be wanting to give it back to him. I'm finished, Brother Clint. You come get a song of invitation. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you so much for everything you've done for us, Lord. And Lord, we're just so thankful for everything that you have done around here. Lord, we're just so blessed and just so honored. Lord, we just ask you just, uh, Lord, help us tonight be with this invitation. Lord, as I know it wasn't necessarily, Lord, maybe a salvation message, Lord, but there's anybody here that's lost, Lord. Uh, help them, Lord, to see their need for salvation, that they come. We can show them what it means, Lord, of everything you've done for us in our hearts. And while we do have those reasons to rejoice, Lord, to see them get saved for it be too late, as you just speak to hearts now during this invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.